Hi everybody, it's Craig again. Uh, we're going to be talking about uh, queuing up objects on a slope and have them roll down. So what we're going to do today is we're going to create a slope, we're going to create some spheres, and we're going to have the spheres queue up on the top of the slope and then slide down the slope just like they were being presented to a robot on a gravity feed. Now we don't need to look at the robot right now, I can put that away, and we better create our two objects we need for this uh, for this project we need to have a sphere so I'm going to take the sphere, we'll make it a hundred millimeters in diameter in radius I should say, create that and we need to create a uh, a ramp so let's just choose a box and we'll make it uh, 2000 long 2000 millimeters long uh, 400 millimeters wide and let's make it 10 millimeters thick. That looks great. We'll just close that up and we'll call that the ramp. So we'll right click on the part and call it ramp. Right click on part 5, move down to rename and we'll call that sphere. Okay, let's, uh, let's put a bit of an angle on that ramp. So we'll go to ramp, position, rotate and we're going to rotate, oh I don't know, not much, it is a ball so we're going to rotate it minus 10 degrees and on the green axis we want to rotate it so that would be the Y axis we apply that and we now have our slope next thing I want to do is position the ball someplace over top of of the ramp now of course I could I could just manually move it around if I want to but today I think what we'll do is use a uh, use a frame so we're gonna go select frame for creating a new frame and we'll we'll choose a surface selection we'll go to our ramp and right about the middle we'll just click and now we have the frame position and I might want to clean that up a little bit maybe 16 50, 213.5, and 300 even. That should be enough. So there is our, our frame. Now I'd like to have that frame above the ramp surface because I'm going to be using it to, um, to, adjust, to set the ball on and the ball is centered on the middle of the sphere. So uh, let's offset the frame. So we're going to take the frame, we're going to offset it uh, on the blue axis and let's offset it by the balls 100 uh, millimeters across, so let's say 105 millimeters up. That's a good spot. Okay, now the frame is sitting above the, uh, the surface. Now if I, took my, if, if I took my sphere and I wanted to, uh, I could set the position of the sphere by placing it on a frame. So set position, place, frame. Which frame? That frame. That frame. Let's try that one more time. Position, place, frame this one. There we go, it's stuck that time. Frame 6 shows up here. And we'll apply it and there's our ball all set up, all ready to go down the hill. Okay, now a couple things I have to do too, uh, as I have to make the sphere, give it some physics, I want to make it a fixed, or a ramp I should say, on the ramp. I want to go to physics and I want its behavior to be fixed so the ball doesn't fall through it. And the sphere itself, this sphere we don't need to make active, this sphere we can just leave the physics inactive. It's just going to be our source. And looks like I've clicked on collision geometry, show collision geometry somehow, so I'm going to turn that back off. Okay, now close that all up, we're just about set. Now what we're going to do is uh, create a um, smart component. So we'll go to modeling, we'll click on smart component and we're going to add two components. We're going to add a source component and this is going to create the ball and we're going to add a queue component. 
So we have a source and a queue. And if you go over to, if you move over to design here, you can actually see the source here and the queue. The source is going to be the thing that produces the balls, and the queue is the thing that's going to be lining them all up. So let's go to the source right now, and we're going to choose for the source of our ball the sphere. So the sphere is the source. And we're going to make that, uh, that object dynamic. It's going to have a physics behavior that's dynamic. Okay, and um, now we have to set the position of this thing up. Now the position is going to be the same as the position of the frame. So I'm going to go to my frame. I'll just close this up. We're going to go to frame and have a look at the position of the frame. There it is. And I need to get those numbers. So I'm just going to use my snipping tool. And I'm just going to snip those numbers so it's convenient for me to see. 1650, 213.5, and 405. Okay, so now we're going to go to um, yeah, move that over to the side so I can see it. Now we're going to go back to the source, properties. Uh, property was it was a sphere, was the source, and the position was 1650. 1650. 213.5 and 405. And we can make it transient so when we're when it's deleted it'll go away and we're going to make the physics dynamic so it actually rolls. And we'll just apply that and our source is set up. Okay. Now, um, the source the source object is going to go to the back of the queue. So it can actually be queued up and then form out. Now we need some inputs to, to get the whole thing going. So we're going to create some inputs and we're going to call this input new ball, like that. And we're going to make it auto reset, which means that when I press the button, it'll just be a momentary contact and then quit right after that. I'll just say OK. And we're going to take this input signal this input signal and we're going to drive it into the execute of our source. So every time we say new ball, the source will be executed, it'll create a sphere and that'll go on to our queue and hopefully roll down. Now when the source is executed, we want to have this queue device put something in the queue, so NQ. So when the source is executed, we want to NQ, and what do we want to NQ? We want to NQ a sphere. All right, that's getting pretty close, so we'll just say close that. Now we're going to go to simulation, and I'm going to have to play it. Now before I play it, I'd like to have it looped continuously, so we're just going to make sure that the run mode is continuous in the simulation setup. It looks like it is, so let's um, Let's view the object and we'll play it. Now of course I have to press that button now, uh, the new ball button. So I'm going to go to my IO simulator and we're going to choose the smart component and there is our new ball. So when I press new ball, hopefully a new ball is generated. Okay. There we go. Now if you uh, if you want, you can actually take that first ball that we have and we could just make it invisible if it, if it gets in your way. Okay, But there you see a, uh, an example of uh, a very simple little physics, physics engine here. So, oh, the robot is still invisible, that's what it's bouncing off of, so why don't we make the robot visible like that and now you can see how it interacts with the robot with the uh, with the balls and that's all there is to it so try this out and see what you think